Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, February 14th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Microsoft Patch Tuesday today and looks like we got patches for an even 50 vulnerabilities in various Microsoft products. In addition, there were two security advisories. The first one, as expected, an advisory that essentially mirrors last week's Adobe Flash security update. This fixes the same two vulnerabilities that Adobe fixed last week, but of course applies them to Microsoft browsers that include Flash. The second advisory is about Spectre. Yet again, Microsoft is updating, refining some of its guidance when it comes to Spectre. No fixed date when you will see patches for Spectre for all versions of Windows, but looks like at least the 32 bit versions of Windows 10 are now ready to go. Other than that, we pretty much got sort of the usual vulnerabilities, plenty of office vulnerabilities that of course can lead to a code execution if a user opens a malicious document. Also vulnerabilities in an Explorer, in particular JavaScript related vulnerabilities. And Microsoft labeled all these scripting engine memory corruption vulnerabilities or all but two as critical, meaning that they could be exploited without user interaction. And then we got a handful of approach escalation vulnerabilities. The user has to be first logged into the system. So that's why they're typically rated important only. Overall, I don't have any strong preference as to in which order you should apply these patches. You hopefully already applied the Adobe update. Microsoft doesn't state as part of its advisory that these vulnerabilities had already been exploited, but uh, really they leave it open here. And we learned last week from Adobe and the Korean cert that one of these vulnerabilities was already exploited in the wild. And if I would have to choose, then I probably would apply the Internet Explorer updates next uh, because that's probably your biggest exposure here. The NTFS privilege escalation vulnerabilities being addressed here sound a little bit interesting, but according to the advisory, you have to be logged in first in order to actually take advantage of this. So it doesn't sound like this is exploitable by, for example, attaching an NTFS formatted USB stick to a system. Now, Microsoft Update has become pretty solid, I would say, over the last decade or so. And it's a little bit surprising that Skype, which is part of Microsoft's portfolio now for quite some time, still uses its own updater. It's not part of your standard Windows update. Instead, what it's doing is that it is downloading a binary from the Microsoft site and then it will just run this binary. The problem here is that the binary being executed is subject to DLL hijacking and it is just being copied into the system root temp directory, which of course anybody can write data to. This makes it a pretty intriguing and possibly easy to exploit privilege escalation vulnerability because the Skype updater runs as a system. The vulnerability was reported to Microsoft last September. Microsoft replied in October that they're not going to release a security update for this issue. Instead, it will be addressed in some unspecified future version of Skype. And secure messaging app Telegram was subject to a sort of interesting Unicode vulnerability. Depending on the language you're using, you either want to type left to right or right to left. And Unicode supports that by having a special character that indicates that everything following that character has to be typed right to left. That character is called the RLO character or right to left 
override a character. Now the problem here is that NetHacker can use this to essentially fool a user into believing that they're actually clicking on harmless content by reversing the last part of a file name with that actually moving the extension to sort of the middle of the file name and part of the file name becomes the very end and looks like the extension. Kaspersky shows an example as part of its blog where something that looks like a .png image is actually JavaScript. Now, if a user clicks on this, they will receive a warning that will tell them, hey, don't run this particular script. But still, the file name displayed has a .png extension. So a user may believe that all they're really trying to do here is looking at an image. So really this is more a user interface issue than sort of a more technical vulnerability, but apparently this has already been exploited in the wild against Telegram users, so be aware and apply the update. Kaspersky did inform Telegram and apparently the latest versions no longer have this problem. It's not quite clear when it was fixed, but uh, according to Kaspersky, this issue started showing up about a year ago in March of 2017. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.